Good morning, Vasilena. Could this find the market? That's interesting. <laughs> okay, guys. So let's get on to it. Please uh, make sure, as always, to to be subscribed on the YouTube channel and on the Telegram. You can follow us on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, so you don't miss any of the updates and you get informed when uh, new webinars are added. Okay. Just before we proceed, <laughs> Uh, I will let you know that this webinar is just for education and market analysis purpose only. There is not involved any personal financial advice for any uh, financial advice you are seeking, please refer to your financial brokers. So, uh, okay. Now, it was an interesting week uh, so far. We had some uh, news, we can say that they surprised the market a bit. What do we mean by that? Remember, at the beginning of the week, we had the Reverse Bank of Australia reporting their interest rate decision. They were expected to go from 0.35% to 0.6, less than double. They make more than double the interest rates. Surprisingly, they went to 0.85%. And as you hear me saying so far, after this, if the market will follow through, if the market will kind of agree with this number, then we will see uh, a good bullish momentum on the currency. However, we didn't experience that on the Australian dollar. We see that uh, Australian dollar against the euro is weak, against the pound is weak, against the, um, the US dollar is weak. So uh, it was a bit tricky to trade this pair on the, to trade this currency on the long side. Okay. Now, following on Wednesday, we had good positive news uh, reported from the European side. However, yesterday when the interest rate remained the same and especially on the minus after this uh, expanding inflation we experienced so far, the market, uh, the euro pair didn't uh, give a bullish trend, didn't keep the bullishness from Wednesday. So we experienced a weak Euro yesterday. Okay, especially after 2.45, I think when the monetary policy decision statement reported. Okay, now today uh, we saw that the China's inflation is still on the rise. Consumer price index is measuring uh, it's a good indicator for uh, inflation, okay? So the lockdowns, of course, they affect the Chinese market. Later on, and if you recall from the early this week, we mentioned that we are expecting positive uh, news today from to be reported from the United States. If the positive renew news here, they're going to confirm this number. So we must, and the market will follow through, we must likely experience a bullishness on the US dollar. And we can use that to capitalize on the move uh, trading US dollar to the long side. Okay, fine. We're going to find a relatively weak currency, uh, match it with a strong currency. And so today, Canadian dollar is expected to report uh, the unemployment rate, so they estimate it to remain the same. We will see if the market will, if the actual number will be more, more positive than uh, the expectation, then most likely we can experience a strong Canadian dollar for the reason that Canadian dollar is performing 
quite good lately. Okay, so that's all for the news events and let's go to our chart. Let's share the screen. All righty. Guys, just to confirm, can everyone see the screen where I'm drawing to make sure we are all looking the uh, the MT5 platform? Can you please type yes if you can see the screen? People from live chat, everyone can see the screen. Yes, okay, thanks for confirming. So, pound USD. We said on the weekly chart, we are on a downtrend. Okay, we are hovering around the EMA, the nine EMA. Downtrend is still valid. On the daily chart, if you recall, we had this, we had this trend line here, which it's a still a valid trend line. However, the market put this equal high here. The market tried to push lower. We had this bearish candle this candle here which it created one two three inside bars uh it's a triangle formation on the lower time frames the next we were expecting a breakout and to be honest i was expecting a breakout to the downside like this it didn't happen the market put a bearish and the reason i was expecting that downside breakout it's because the market is in a downtrend equal highs here almost a week the market didn't break above so i was hoping for a nice reversal pattern i didn't see any reversal pattern here the only thing i saw it was a false breakout of this lower here then a market put a bullish engulfing here but the distance was relatively slow and on the intraday charts like one hour 15 minutes even four hour chart i didn't find any entry at the point i was looking so uh it wasn't a good enough trade for me to participate i didn't do it to the long side however the market uh it's just pushing lower okay the pound it doesn't look perform so strong so Next one, Euro USD. If you recall, uh, on the daily chart, I had an intraday and I talked about an intraday trade I took down from here. Uh, and then, of course, we talked about this resistance when market goes, approaches a resistance area. Uh, I'm, that's my trading style. I don't hold trades for a hope to break and create a new trend because the overall market trend is down we had a higher high here but uh, especially after the news announcement yesterday from the interest rates of the european central bank then that rate that trade was invalid for me and i just closed it when the market touches this this uh this line here okay it's nothing wrong to take profits and be out of the trade instead of uh, get into the trade and trying to find your way out if it's just going against you. Uh, now we saw that the market put a bearish engulfing here, and I have a pending order, an intraday pending order here, and I will show you what I've done. I go to the four hour chart. For me, this is. Uh, where is the drawing for me this is a lower low we broke the structure we clear these lows here and we close lower so uh, i take his point i take the point of reference as this one here because the market make a higher high higher high from here so 
I use this as point of reference now. So lower low, very strong move, followed through by not that strong move, but still good enough for me to see that uh, bears are in the market, sellers are in the market. So I have a pending order here. I have my stop somewhere here. And because if the if this candle and it's valid, I have it valid only for this candle. If this candle is going to break below, it's going to create a bearish engulfing and it's good for me. And I'm targeting somewhere. First target is going to be here and second target is going to be there. Okay. Uh, I know some people are on the long side. I don't know if you are still on the trade or how do you manage your trade. Just be cautious and make sure you understand the overall market structure and you understand also the correlation between the currencies. You, you have to understand if Euro in general is in an uptrend. So if Euro in general is in an uptrend, then you can hold Euros uh, for, for a long time. But if collectively the euro is not in an uptrend, then you, you must manage your trades accordingly. Okay. Now let's go to the Australian dollar, US dollar. What do we have here? As you can see, it was a trend line. We spoke uh, a few sessions earlier. That was a trend line. Market put an equal high here. We were expecting after this bullish engulfing here, the market to push higher. It didn't follow through. Yesterday, uh, we experienced a strong US dollar overall. So a strong US dollar pushed the Australian dollar to the downside. Same, same like the Euro and the pound and the New Zealand. Okay, everything pushed to the, to the downside. So it, it shows us that the US dollar is, is strong currently. So today, today I use that on the four hour chart and I'm waiting. I have a sell limit order here because of the new lower low. Again, here we had the market was unable to put higher highs. After this high here, the market pushed there, didn't put a new high there. Okay, so that was actually the low, but that was also a kind of support. The market clearly showed the intention that it's breaking lower. If we see that this pair candle, this pair candle, this pair candle, there are full candles, too much volume within the candle. It needs too many orders. They think, uh, of course, we have some room to mitigate the positions above here. We saw earlier on the Asian session that the market put this uh, pin bar here. It's a counter trend trade, something I don't usually touch and I didn't take anything here, but I'm just waiting for the market to come around uh, 50 to 61% Fibonacci level. And I matched it with the last swing low, which we expect to experience a bit of volatility around this level here. Many orders uh, usually are sitting around the last swings. So we have the trend line in place. We have the lower low created. We wait for a pushback and then we are ready to go to the short side. I'm targeting somewhere this, uh, I will move my target somewhere to these levels here. Okay, it's a good two to one trade. If it's gonna play out and if it's gonna be a winning trade, maybe the market is gonna just sell off from here and that's that's fine. Uh, it's not my trading style to trade like this. So um, I'm not willing to touch it. Let's go to the next one. Guys, sorry, I saw some questions they are coming uh, through. I'm going to just leave uh, five minutes later and I will answer all the questions. Okay, I promise you. Then we have uh, USDJPY. USDJPY is all the, if we go to uh, USDJPY, JBPJPY, Euro JPY, and all the JPY, Japanese yen, it's very weak, so it's causing all the rest to push higher. 
okay? So uh, for us to take any trades, we have to go to the lower time frames because the trend is already extended. We see here the market is just drifting sideways. Now, here it's a tricky point I would like to, to tell you about. This pattern here, it's showing that it's trying to fall as a uh, range. Sometimes it's double bottoms range and uh, triple bottoms depends on the on how how big is that trend how old is the trend in terms of the time okay so uh at this type of market it's better just to trade with a trend instead of trying and catch the falling knife if you will uh, if you like that uh, expression and if you want to participate on the long side uh a good breakout, they are occurring when the market is trending, okay? Then pound yen behaving the similar way, although we reached resistance here, it's a strong resistance, okay? Yesterday the market put a kind of bearish close, you can say it's not a bearish engulfing, so what do we expect if you are an intraday trader? You can go to the four hour chart, you can go to the one hour chart, trying to find a trend forming. Uh, and then you can, uh, you can execute if you are this type of trader. All right, Euro again the same. You can see that Euro was the weakest out of all. Euro cut, we extensively talked about this pair. Here we have, here we have the bottom of the range. Uh, if you recall, I had a pending order here. I was trying to catch the bullish engulfing on to the upside. It didn't happen. Uh, it was valid only for one day. So uh, I didn't participate in the trade. Yesterday we saw that the euro pushed higher. But again, this move happened if we, as we understand so far, this move happened because the Canadian dollar was relatively strong across the ball and the euro was strong across the ball. However, the euro um, outperformed the Canadian dollar. You can see it clearly on the JBP cut. If you recall, I was holding one entry here. Uh, I had one entry there and an intraday entry here. Okay, I closed this morning when the market reached this high level because regardless we have the divergence. I acknowledge that the market uh, has, uh, it's in a downtrend, a clear downtrend. So we have to respect the trend. Maybe today it's going to expand, especially with negative Canadian dollar news. The market has the high probability to push higher. However, that wasn't my plan. As I told you from the beginning of the sessions, I usually go for a two to one uh, reward risk. I risk one to make two. If I take that, I'm very happy, especially on the counter turn trade. Now, if the market is going to move higher and it's going to clear these highs, I will wait definitely for a push lower, wherever it's going to be the push lower. I will find an entry either on the daily or on the four hour chart, and I will keep it for a while, or at least to come up to these levels here. Okay, because that will be a confirmed trend. But here we are not in a confirmed trend, we are on a counter trend of the daily chart. Okay. So let's see, Euro, Australian dollar. Here is the surprise of the week. Now, Australian dollar interest rates, they hiked so, uh, as we saw on the, on the news. Now, the Australian dollar didn't push higher, the Euro pushed higher, uh, which it indicates uh, a weak Australian dollar, a weak Australian dollar interest rates rising and the currency is uh, losing its value, it indicates that 
it's a weak weak market weak economy however you prefer to uh, to say okay we can see that now the market is just going nowhere pretty much so i'm just flat on that on this pair pound australian dollar pound was uh, relatively strong however if you recall we talked about this range that it's a bit tricky to enter trades from here however the market followed through now we are around this intraday uh, uh, resistance so i don't know what's going to happen and um, i don't have any recognized pattern within this range to worth putting uh, my money on, on this trade if it was outside of the range and we see this type of pattern yes lower lows lower highs we uh, wait the price to come here like this if you can match them find price action on the four hour or break of the structure on the daily or on the four hour and lower highs lower lows and just execute the trade that's a valid one uh gold remember as we say that gold we are in between this tight range which the price behaving in a very very random and sideways movement uh, as we said that the gold uh, it's correlated highly correlated with the us dollar because it's priced on the us dollar so we just wait for that now that's trend still intact here higher highs on the wti the market remember we talked about i mentioned about this pin bar here that it's not my trade yeah it's a valid pin bar it's retesting it make a higher high yeah it make higher high here the market is strong so it didn't let the it didn't let the sellers to take control. The buyers step in here, rescue the prices, and they close higher than what from where they open. So, what does it indicate? It indicates that the market is still strong. However, the entry point here for me is not a good entry point because the market didn't make a solid trend before it retraced like this one here we had a, a solid trend a good higher high before it retraced so a valid entry point was this one here if you miss this entry here you could have a limit order to take the uh, the place that to take the price and go and be on the upside now okay but right now for my trading style this this one here i prefer to see the price comes uh comes down to somewhere on this area okay uh matching it with this with this support with this uh, support zone here sorry this one here yep so that's all from the market okay and if you're going to trade today intraday remember that it's the end of the week uh, we had a bit of uncertain in the in the price behavior in the market behavior because when you see and again i will repeat that because it's important guys when you see interest rates high moves higher and the market it doesn't follow through and it just moves sideways and uh, and then instead of push higher the market is just selling off it's an indication of a weak a weak currency like we saw with the australian dollar so just be cautious if you are trading australian dollar on the on the buy sign as well today who knows from monday maybe the australian dollar is going to create a trend maybe some other news announcement today on the usa it's going to just uh, create a completely different uh, picture for the next week okay so just risk your 
just manage your risks accordingly. So let's go to see, we have some questions. Please write uh, the questions here. Let's see, good morning, good morning. I really like your training style, but to be honest, it's really fast for me and hard to understand your underlying rules because your analysis is sometimes a little bit confusing, random to me. Okay, Rocket, it's more for experts and not for beginners. Okay, so guys, as you know, and uh, I completely understand that you used to uh, watch Marcus uh, trading and he's an exceptional trader as well. However, I have a different approach. I have a bit more um, Price, specific price approach to the market. Okay, uh, my trading style maybe it looks a bit confusing at the beginning. That's why I just keep. It, I try to keep it as simple as possible. And um, I'm sure that if you start attending also the educational webinars uh, I'm hosting. At, for now, it's just twice a month. Uh, everything will will make sense i'm just letting you know that at admirals i'm the global educator of of the company okay i'm rewriting from scratches the whole education on the website we're going to replace soon the zero to hero education program so i start from the very 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 basics and climb higher in knowledge and, and, and in market explanation. Okay, so for this reason, please be patient. Keep your trading style. The purpose of, of this uh, 30 minutes morning briefing, it's not to change your trading style. No, is to see also someone else explaining his thought and the way he reads the market. So maybe just one thing to take out from my trading style. Maybe it's not going to be the entries. Maybe it's not going to be the um, when I close the trade, the exit. Maybe it's going to be the risk management. Maybe from these sessions, it's going to be good enough for you to, to understand that in a probabilities um, environment, we have to have the odds on our favor. So you have to be more uh, more detailed with your risk management. So you can have, let's say, the, the trades you are taking, but you can manage your risks with two to one or three to one or at least one to one. So when the market gives you profits, you just take them. Like example here, I know a few traders because, okay, I wasn't doing the sessions back then, but a uh, few traders I know, we were talking about this market here and they were some people entered the market on this pin bar. All right, an uptrend, we are on WTI. It was somewhere end of, end of February, I think. Middle of February, not end of February, okay. And it was this pin bar here, this entry here. And the market exploded up to here. And there were people asking me, Theo, what should I do? Should I take? It's more than three to one, this trade. So you have to understand that if you uh, are trading probabilities, you don't need to just squeeze the last pip and to, to sell the top and to buy the last bottom. Uh, that's not our job as traders. Our job as traders is to make sure we have the odds on our favor when we are trading. So if you entered here and you had your stop there and then the market came around here, if you are consistent in your trading, then you're gonna, in the long run, you're gonna experience positive results, okay? And you're gonna see your account uh, balance uh, moving higher and higher and higher, okay? So, uh, or let's say you kept the trade then you see this, this reaction here with this gap over there, what's happened? Maybe that was a Monday, that was a Friday candle. So what's happening here? Maybe the market, it's a bit uncertain. Is it okay to take all this profit out? Should I stay and see what is gonna happen? You are smart and you can answer the question your, yourself. Okay. Uh, US, 
Sorry, which pair, Andre? Your trading style is better for me. Thank you, Vasilena. And as I said before, uh, slowly, slowly, we're gonna learn each other's trading style, and we're gonna we're gonna have a great, great outcome. Do you see down just attending a push to reclaim yesterday's huge, huge drop? Let's go just very quickly to down Jones. Uh, down Jones 30. Okay. So, oh, where is down Jones? We can see a similar we can see a paddle, a similar pattern with a, with a down Jones. Now to here on the down Jones, we see that the market is creating lower lows. We are on the weekly chart. Okay, this is just the, the overall view of the market. So the market is making lower lows. And last week we had the sellers taking control. So this week, if we try to attempt on a downtrend to trade to the upside, it's like we are trying to grab the falling knife, right? So for this market, I just prefer to see the buyers around this level here. So around this level here, I would prefer to see the buyers to reject the prices. I would like to see a false break, either with a candle close here and the next day a candle close higher, something to indicate a false break here. So it will help us to understand the market's behavior. Of course, maybe the market is gonna to come to mitigate some positions here and then to push lower, anything can happen. Okay, guys, again, uh, I understand where you're coming from in terms of trading. So uh, you have to understand something. Our job as traders, it's not to know what it's going to happen. Our job is to identify our patterns, trading patterns, our entry points, and to allocate the amount of money we are willing to use for a specific trade and then to execute the trade and then let the trade work. We must have our uh, stops in place. And for me, we also must have our profit targets. Uh, if you are a price action trader, you need profit targets, okay? In my opinion, okay? So this index, okay, guys, really, really, I would like to stay for another 30 minutes to answer all the questions they are coming. Uh, this guy does through an example how to ring and find the entry. Uh, US dollar index, guys, US dollar index, it's still, let me see if I have it here just to, whoop. US dollar index, we have this push, uh, this gap here. Now, as you can, oh, sorry, it was a, a bullish engulfing. So the market is trying to push higher. Uh, as we can see from the rest of the pairs, US dollar is performing. Uh, it has its best perform amongst the other currencies. So it's a strong pair in the market. Um, it's just, it shows that it wants to move higher, especially this bullish engulfing. It's an indication that the market wants to move higher. Okay, uh, so that's that's how I see it. Mihai, I will promise I will do that on Monday because we will need some time and unfortunately our uh, time frame ends now. So on Monday, please uh, remind me that you would like to go through the, the way I see and I will analyze the market. We will choose a pair and we're gonna stick for that for a while. Okay, and I will show you how I enter and so on and so forth. Okay, guys, again, if you are trading intraday today, just be cautious about the news events. Don't cut yourself in any bad trades that you're gonna regret it. Manage your risk accordingly around news events. If you would like also reduce your risk, so uh, because of the volatility. 
I wish you happy trading, a great weekend ahead. It was my honor and my pleasure to serve you on this, um, on this session. Okay, I wish you all the best and I will see you on Monday at same time. Bye-bye, see you.